Are we live on the appropriate stream on the appropriate channel? We waste. I, I wasted a notification. Okay, we're 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 live on this place. Okay, let me just check YouTube. Okay, we're live on YouTube as well. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I'm over here thinking I have issues resolved behind the scenes, and it's all over the place. Nevertheless, we're here. And I want to go over Sebastian Rogers. Nancy Grace has done another interview. And guess who is the guest? Seth Rogers, the biological father of Sebastian Rogers. Now, Sebastian Rogers went missing February 26th. I can't even believe it's been that long already. 15-year-old. Say he's autistic. I, I'm going to have to... Rose on Twitter has been collecting like really good notes off of the various interviews. I almost feel like at some point I should just bring somebody on that's been watching all the interviews. I know she's been watching all the interviews. Grandma spoke out the other day as well. Grandma's not buying mom and stepdad. She just called them out. I want to see if I can find that post. Where's that post that? Actually, I have an easier time finding it on my own Twitter page, probably. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now, I want to read this and then we'll get into Nancy Grace. Oop. Actually, let me just. I think I downloaded it yesterday. Let's do that. Let me just read the download. So this is from Grandma. This is the biological father's side, Grandma. And she said, first, I first and foremost want to thank everybody for their prayers, and especially to those who have put boots on the ground looking for my grandson. I see a lot of people thinking that things have been manipulated and feeling sorry for the mother and stepdad. The biggest manipulator of information and this whole scenario is Chris Proudfoot. That's the stepdad. He accuses YouTubers of manipulating information. He, well, he's the biggest spinner of all. He thinks there's three sides to every truth. No, there's not three sides to every truth. There's three sides to every story. I'm one of those people too. I don't, I don't believe in that whole, uh, oh, well, it's my, it's my truth. It's my truth. My truth, no, no, there's just the truth. There's different sides to the story. There's only, I, in my opinion, there's just one truth. I, I, people love to say, well, that's my truth. No, no, no. There's just the truth and different sides to the story. Rainbow, wow, Rainbow Rabbit Hole, thank you so much for gifting 20 memberships. Holy moly. Really, really nice of you. Thank you. Make sure uh, on YouTube you guys check out my front page. There's a members playlist and members videos and some of my crazy stories on there um so back to this there's three sides to every story but only one side to the truth totally agree i'm so frustrated and angry let me fix this for you guys so frustrated and angry i spoke to my grandson at least two times a month and many times in between he told me a lot of things that I'm sure Chris Proudfoot does not want me to put out there. I have not spoken to TBI at this point. However, I think this will change this week. If info is not provided, that brings my grandson home. The truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth needs to be put out there. When you tell the truth, the whole truth, stories don't change timeline, don't change facts come out. If you want to feel sorry or sad or bad for someone, Think about Sebastian's father, Seth Rogers. Sebastian is his whole life, his reason for being. And maybe you should look into Kate, Katie's background, which is the biological mother and her family and her history of making. I'm not fanned. I'm not sure what that means there, but manipulating people to do her bidding. I think you'll find some interesting facts will come out for now. Please just keep Sebastian's name and face out there. Please help me find my grandson. His dad is beside himself and needs some closure. So grandma going off. Okay. When I've seen the interviews with mom and, and stepdad, 
I particularly didn't pick up, like, I, I just didn't really pick up anything. But from what I've seen, people that have been watching their interviews, there's been just different details that have changed over time. From what I hear. Vicky, thank you for the membership. April B12, thank you for the 18 months. Amazing. Thank you for the true crime coverage and all the laughs. You're the best month. Thank you. Appreciate the support. Cindy Lee, thank you for the four months. That's four official months after two years, finally. <laughs> cool. Thank you. The standoff, the helicopter cut off. All right. So let's listen to Nancy Grace. Sebastian's still missing. Hey, guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this. He's six. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. Where is a missing autistic teen, Sebastian Rogers? The hunt is on for this boy. Did he wander away from home entirely barefoot? This as eerie surveillance footage emerges outside Sebastian's home purportedly of two people with flashlights. What does that mean? Hey guys, it is Ryan. Oh, I'm not sure if it comes out to foil. Eerie. Yeah, th there was this whole video that was released by this reporter, Nick Barris. He's really freaking good. And he's a uh, mainly on Facebook from what I've seen. So I need to check him for some updates as well. I haven't checked his page in a while, but he showed this video that night that there were two flashlights coming out like around the house. And we know that Sebastian left with a flashlight barefoot, apparently. I don't know, I don't know why. And Nick Barris says there's nothing new in the case. He posted this 20 hours ago. He's been in contact with the investigators, no new leads. I've now been three weeks. It's now been three weeks, no trace. So, I don't know. Weird, 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 weird. Surveillance footage emerges outside Sebastian's home purportedly of two people with flashlights. What does that mean? I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. First of all, listen to this. When I woke him up for school, he wasn't there. I took a second and walked through the house looking for him in case he'd gotten up and was trying to get breakfast or something because he did that sometimes. Um, about three minutes in, give or take, I was on the phone with my husband. I said, I can't find him. Um, he said, what do you mean you can't find him? I said, he's not in the house. You are hearing Sebastian's mother describing the moment that she realizes Sebastian is gone. Again, I'm Nancy Grace, and I want to thank you for being with us. The search for Sebastian is on. And let me, right off the top, give you the tip line, 615-451-3838. Repeat, 615-451-3838. This boy needs our help. Where is Sebastian? Joining me, an all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now. But first, I want to go out to a very special guest. This is Sebastian's father joining mm. us, Seth Rogers. Mr. Rogers, thank you for being with us. Could you recount for us when you learned Sebastian is missing? I know it just seems completely surreal. There's no words for it. I mean, when I found out that he was gone, I was just like... I headed over to Katie's house, see what was going on, and he's not here. I don't know where he's at. I've been looking for him every day. Seth, what have you been doing to look for him every day? And I know that to be true. You are looking for him every day. Mm -hmm. This young boy is autistic. He may not in a scared and emotional and lost state, he may not even be able to tell someone who he is and where his home is. He is out there lost 
and the Lord only knows where. Seth, what have you been doing to find Sebastian? Been handing out flyers every day. I've been on the podcast. I've done some face-to-face interviews on the news. I'm just anything I can. I've been to the south side of Nashville. I've been to Franklin. I've been to Bellevue. I've been through Henderson. I've been through Gallatin. Oh. I've been through Clarksville. I've been through Everywhere. Grove, Kentucky. I mean, I'm handing out flyers, finding out. I mean, just, I want everybody to, to see my son and know that he's missing. And that if you see him, call 911. I, I need my son back. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my mind around what you and Sebastian's mom are going through. Because when I go in to wake up my twins, if they're not in the bed, which is rare, they're usually still asleep. If they're not in the bed, I immediately glance in the bathroom. And if they're not there, that's totally out of character. They're always right there in their bedroom in the morning when I wake them up. And that would be totally out of the normal If they weren't there, tell me your understanding of what happened. Katie told me that she when she woke up Monday morning that he wasn't in his room and she can't find him. And I heard that once I got there. When I got off of work, I had a text message from the stepfather, Chris, and a missed phone call. And I called him and he told me that Sebastian was missing and he didn't know what had happened. So, Seth. To your understanding, when you get there to the scene, what time did you get to the home that day? I got the message at about 7.20. I was there at about 8 o'clock. So immediately. When you got to the home, tell me about the state of the home. The home was clean. I mean, it looked like it normally did when I walked in. So were there any signs of forced entry at the front or back door or, or on Sebastian's window that you could observe? No. There was none. Was anything stolen from the home? Not that I was informed of. Do you know if there are burglar lights, motion sensor lights that would turn on if someone moved on the perimeter of the home? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to understand his daily routine. Did Sebastian get up every morning and go to school? Yes, ma'am. What school? Beach High School. How far away? I think it's like 0.6 miles. Six miles, did you say six miles? 0.6. 0.6 miles, very mm. close to home. Well, did sir. he walk or take a bus or ride a bike? He rode a bu- uh, He rode the bus. He rode the bus. Is he mainstreamed? He is autistic. Is he mainstreamed with other students? He's in their Why We Try program. What is that? It's for their. It's for the special needs children, where they are doing the same tasks that the mainstream does, but they get a little bit extra time. You know, if they have like 30 questions and then in the Why We Try program, they get like 20 and they get uh, extra time to answer them. Okay, I'm trying to understand that morning your wife calls you, your ex calls you about 7.20 a.m. Would that have been on a school day? No, uh, it was it was her husband that called me. Okay, was that at 7.20 a.m.? No, 7.20 a.m. is when I got to my vehicle because I got off of work at 7. My shift ended at 7. By the time I found out to make sure that I didn't have to stay over or anything, then I got to my truck about 7.20, and they had texted me and tried to call me on my cell phone at around 6.20. And you found out about it at 7.20, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rogers, did he go missing on a school day? From my understanding, she put him to bed Sunday night, and yes, Monday morning, he's missing. Okay, so he's in his room Sunday night. Monday morning, he's gone out of his home. Could you tell me the level of the severity of his autism? He's very intelligent. He's very smart. He just lacks social skills in reading of people's body language. Um He likes things to be in a routine. He likes to control his environment. I'm looking at Sebastian right now, and it is breaking my heart, thinking of this young boy, this autistic boy, possibly out in the wild, possibly with strangers he doesn't know. What would his reaction be to that, Seth Rogers? I don't know, because hes I've never seen him have to deal with this. Most of the time, if he's with me, he gets his information from from me about interacting with people. You, you know, if I sit there 
and I'm meeting new people, I talk to him. It's like, son, you can introduce yourself if you would like. If he does, he does. If he doesn't want to, I don't make him. Seth, when was the last time you can verify that he was alive and well? When I talked to him on Thursday. How often do you see him? I, I get to see him every other weekend. If he's on like a spring break or a fall break or where he's got an extended time away from school for like school days. Uh, when we had the, the weather was bad out here and they canceled school, he was with me. Summer breaks. I get him whenever he's not. And he went missing on February 26th. That was a Monday. And then I think he said the thir- Thursday before, I guess, was the verifiable time. But he last, I guess, spoke to him. That's cool. Seth. Whenever you have the opportunity to be with Sebastian, isn't it true that you exercise that opportunity? You are with him every chance possible under the law. Yes, ma'am. Guys, I'm bringing in the rest of the panel. You are hearing Seth Rogers describe the moment. He gets off of work around 7 a.m., gets to his vehicle, and realizes his wife and the stepdad have been calling and texting him uh, since around 6 20 ish a.m. It's on a Monday morning to tell him his son, an autistic boy, is missing from their home. And from what I can tell right now, uh, you heard Aaron Cantrell jumping in earlier. And thank you for that, Aaron. Uh, please don't hold back, Aaron. We're not having high tea at Windsor Castle. Aaron is joining us from News Channel 5 in Nashville. Aaron, thank you for being with us. I don't hear anything so far about a, a forced entry, about a window being open, about anything being taken from the home. I understand that the mother put him to bed at regular bedtime for school the next morning and that around 6 to 6.20 a.m. Monday morning, she says she goes into his bedroom to wake him and he is gone. Aaron or Seth or anyone else, else on the panel, do we know that anything else was missing, such as his backpack, a cell phone, something he liked? Do we know anything about anything missing from the home? His mother said that he's missing a keychain flashlight. That's that's it. His keychain flashlight. Interesting. Interesting, Seth Rogers. When I come in, I put my driver's license and credit cards, which are in a rubber band. That's my pocketbook. My, all of that and my key in a certain spot in the kitchen. Rarely do I put it anywhere else. This is what I'm asking, Seth. You told me that your son autistic boy Sebastian likes things in a certain way in a routine like many of us would he have had that flashlight and I believe you said keys flashlight and keys attached to each other it's a keychain flashlight it's a flashlight that would go in your keys I bet he always put them in a certain place didn't he in my house all of his stuff is in his upper drawer when the police showed up at my house to look upper drawer house key wallet Everything's in his upper drawer. Best based on um, slash necessary void where prohibited. Wait, it's all starting to just like many of us like things to be in a certain order uh, for many, many varied reasons. If this was missing from Sebastian's home, I would venture to hypothesize he took it with him. Correct. Yes. And, you know, without knowing Sebastian personally, I can't make any assumptions about his behavior. But knowing that this was not a typical history for him to wander, to leave the house in the middle of the night, um, it is interesting that he did leave with that keychain flashlight. You know, another thing, uh, which is quite the dichotomy, Courtney Lasky, and I'm going to throw this to you as well, Seth Rogers. If he was in such routine as I believe he was due to his circumstances being autistic, why would he have left without his shoes? That yeah. is not his routine. Well, the, th- the thing with his shoes, too, I forgot, and maybe people in the chat can remember, there was something about his, something, oh, was it Ant Hills or something? I, I think he had stepped in Ant Hills or something like that, so he didn't like to really go out barefoot. Maybe if it was, like, to get the mail or something like that. So for him to leave that night barefoot, I I guess they're saying that was kind of an odd thing. Why barefoot? This is not a child that leaves a home without his shoes. 
First of all, Seth, how do I know he didn't have his shoes? Three pairs of shoes you know. were at the front door. His old tennis shoes, his new tennis shoes that his mama mm-hmm. had just bought him, and the boots that I had just bought him. Is it possible he wore another set of shoes? His feet were growing. The last time I had him for that, the, the last weekend I had him, his mama told me that his shoes weren't fitting anymore. And she asked me to get him shoes. And we wanted a pair of boots, so we went to Boot Barn and got him a pair of boots. Is it possible he wore a different pair of shoes? I don't think so, because if he's not fitting into them, she gets rid of them. Okay, let me tell you something, uh, Seth. My son and daughter have one of those shoe racks over the back of their closet door. And I would see, I see those closet doors 10 times a day. I would see if shoes were missing. I would know that. There's no shoes in his room. Okay, there's my answer. He left without his shoes on. Shoes get taken off at the front door, same as my house. Same Mm. here. I always have people take their shoes off at the door. Just habit. So there were no shoes in his room. All his shoes were still sitting at the door. Can we confirm that, Seth? Yes, ma'am. Guys, you may think, why is she asking and asking and asking about the same thing? I'll tell you why. Behavioral evidence. Evidence of routine. Uh, Hold on, Courtney Lasky, because this uh, uh, touches on you as well. Dr. Sherry Schwartz is with me, forensic psychologist specializing in victim advocacy at panthermitigation.com. Dr. Sherry, thank you for being with us. Dr. Sherry, when I say routine evidence, I don't mean mundane evidence, just, you know, the regular evidence. I mean, evidence of routine. For instance, if I came and sat down in this chair in this studio and Jackie was not right there, she would either be dead or on the way or in the hospital, period, because that's her routine, right? So this autistic child would not have left in the middle of the night without a pair of shoes on. And that is telling me something probatively. It proves something to me. What do you think of it, Dr. Sherry? I agree completely, Nancy. I actually saw an interview that uh, Mr. Rogers gave about this particular issue and how when he was younger, Sebastian, he stepped, he went outside barefoot Mm -hmm. and he stepped into an anthill of fire ants. And so dad doesn't believe that he would go out barefoot. And so this is this goes to that behavioral evidence that you're talking about. This is another fact that's very important that we need to pay attention to because this is not something that Sebastian would normally do. And we know this because he's had a prior experience. So these are really important cues in an investigation like this. Dr. Sherry Schwartz, a lot of people may think that means nothing that I can't find his shoes, but it means a lot to me. And I guarantee you, it would mean a lot to any mother or father hearing this evidence. Seth, what does it mean to you? Was he prone to go outside and wander around at all, period, uh, number one, at night, in the dark, number two, and without his shoes on, number three? Would he ever have done that, Seth? From my, No. I mean, the only time he goes outside at night, at my house is to put the trash in the trash can, which is right outside my front door. That's it. You know, I'm very curious about this. And one more thing, while while it's on my mind, does he have social media, Seth? No, Mm. he does not. Okay, good. I can rule that out, or at least we don't think he does. Does he have a cell phone? He does have a cell phone. Where's the cell phone? At his mom and dad, at his mom and stepfather's. Didn't take his cell phone. Seth, Mm -hmm. is he like every other... Mm. uh, a boy in America glued to his cell phone? When he has access to it. What do you mean by that? When does he have access? When he has access to like YouTube and stuff like that, he is glued to his phone because he likes to watch videos about Minecraft and he likes to watch videos mm-hmm. of people playing Minecraft. Okay, you do know that is social media because people can talk to each other on Minecraft. Did you know that? I didn't know that. No, what I'm talking about is the videos. He watches pe- videos of people playing it. On YouTube. Does he play it? I I think he has it for his Switch. At- and that was a big question that had come up about this Nintendo Switch thing. And can you chat with people? And I don't know. I don't know the regular apps of Minecraft. It's online. You can. I don't know what the Nintendo Switch, if you can or not. can't. But I heard there, there is an online option. So I don't, I don't know. At his mom's house. But he does not have. And he's glued to that all the time. We need a forensic search of that phone pronto, Seth, because yeah. uh, 
I find it very curious if he went voluntarily that he didn't take the phone with him. Okay, because it'd be a cold day in H-E-L-L that either one of my 16-year-olds would go anywhere without their phone. And it's not just them. I mean, everybody takes their phone with them everywhere they go. It's like their magic wand. You can't be without it. So I find it interesting. Did the mom have the phone put away? Could he have taken it with him? Most of the time I've seen the phone plugged in on the counter on the little bar in their kitchen. Okay, I'm going to Courtney Lasky joining us, uh, expert in children and teens with autism. Courtney, you've been listening way in. Yes, I absolutely agree with you, Nancy. This is a very unusual pattern of behavior that we're looking at. If this child has access to a cell phone, like you said, Minecraft is social media, YouTube is social media, anywhere that he would have access and the ability to talk with others. Um, My concern would be related to his autism diagnosis and that deficit in communication and understanding of social skills? Um, Is it possible that peers at school or someone has contacted him through these gaming methods? Um, Bullying, peer pressure, was he persuaded to leave perhaps um, from his mom's house in the middle of the night? Is that you jumping in, Seth? Yes, ma'am. I know that his phone was locked down. He had no internet access. He only had the ability to take pictures on his phone, text on his phone, FaceTime, and telephone calls. Everything else was locked down on his phone. Have the police looked at his phone? Have they taken his phone to look at who he may have been speaking to? Yes, ma'am. Question, where is this coming where is this coming from, Aaron Cantrell, that people saw flashlights, uh, two people with flashlights around the property the night that Sebastian disappears? And I keep seeing in all the headlines uh, the night that Sebastian wandered off barefoot. I don't think that's what happened. He's never wandered off before. What? Go ahead, dear. Yes, ma'am. Well, we know we got that video a little later. So we just got that video maybe and released it uh, within like the last week or so. But this is from just neighborhood video, like the ring doorbell cameras Um, in that subdivision from the reporting. There's not street lights there. So that's why it's so pitch black and it's so late at night. But you see those two flashlights. But what's interesting is where these lights are it's almost a common area so it wouldn't be odd if someone may have been out at that time walking their dog or something of that nature but the fact that sebastian did leave with a flashlight and there are two flashlights seen in that video why do you keep saying sebastian did leave why are you saying that would you go out in the middle of the night and leave without your shoes on i'm just curious would you Aaron? No, you make a good point. I would not leave without my shoes. I don't think he would either. Even more so because you're hearing Courtney Lasky and Seth Rogers state this boy is autistic. He doesn't think the same way we think. We have to try to think like him. He liked everything in a particular routine. His routine was he wore shoes every time he went out after the ant bed incident. Okay? So, no, why would he go missing? And let me ask you something else, Aaron Cantrell. Isn't it true that Emergency Management Agency Director Ken Widener has told us that the canines could not pick up a scent outdoors? The thing I'm wondering about that is that I thought I heard, had heard that... Um some I don't know if it was the stepdad or biological father that said that there was supposedly a trace from the canine like a scent and that it got to a construction place but then it just drops off there Wendy thank you so much for the membership I appreciate that thank you for the 10 memberships amazing I I think I gotta fix I think the numbers are right up there I don't know if I have to fix it but thank you so much um by the way Vicky thank you for the super chat polyester thank you for joining the membership after this stream, we're going to jump to, after this one, a couple of people have hit me up about this. There is a prison escaped, well, I think they escaped from a hospital in Idaho, shot three officers, persons on the run. So uh, after this stream, we're going to jump on that for a little bit. Um, there's some details we've got to talk about and stay, you know, keep, keep our eyes peeled for that story too. Virginia, thank you so much for the 10. Thank you for being live as often as you are. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. I don't listen. I, how the hell does this kid disappear like that? Gone. Doesn't seem like any trace, no evidence besides that 
video clip that came out, I guess, the, the two lights in the dark. I'm assuming police have searched that house for any kind of evidence, forensic stuff. I, I don't know. And why leave your phone behind? Unless you were instructed to do so, or if you wanted to leave, or, or, or you were lured and somebody said, hey, just turn off your phone. Why leave without the shoes? It's been almost a month, three weeks, I think now, almost a month. How does somebody just disappear like that? 15 years old. I, I guess you could say it happens all the time. People disappear all the time, I guess. I guess. I, I don't know what to think. I might one of these days have to spend some time and go watch those interviews. Since there's nowhere else to look. Except inward. Where the only bits of information that's coming out is coming out. Yeah, and does Ellie have Sebastian's phone? I'm going to have to go check out some of these other channels that have interviewed the parents. Uh, you know, the mother and stepfather. I'm not accusing, but I've just seen people that have watched all of them have said that there's inconsistencies. I don't know. And then I see grandma's message, grandma snapping and going off. Exactly. Um, they have not been able to pick up a cent. They had a false... Um, um, hit, but then that did not turn out to be anything because when this, when Sebastian went missing, it was kind of a warm day that first day. But after the next day of the search, it went extremely cold. It was rainy, which made it even more concerning because here you do, you have this 15 year old who has autism with no shoes on and, you know, maybe a sweatshirt and sweatpants, but it is now cold. So they were concerned about hypothermia as well. So a lot of factors kind of changed the search as well. Um, but they have not picked up a scent at all. Uh, officials have now been able to analyze home security video from that Hendersonville neighborhood and discover signs of what may have happened to Sebastian. Two people near the family home, and as I recall, it was around 3.10 a.m. that Monday. 3.10 a.m. Who in the hay is walking around, two people, two flashlights, at 3.10 a.m. in that neighborhood, and coincidentally, it is the same time during which Sebastian goes missing, which leads me to our guest, Douglas McGregor, geographic profiler specializing in violent crime and missing people. You can find him at the Geo Profiler. Douglas, thank you so much for joining us. A lot's happening right here. No canine scent outside. No shoes. Uh, no break-in. No theft. The phone's still there. Weigh in. So if we look at if we look at each of these, the no shoes thing, there's a lot of autistic people who actually enjoy going barefoot. It, you know, it connects them with the earth. They like that texture, that feel. Uh, I mean, there's a whole campaign barefooting for autism. Okay, let me mm. stop you right know. there, Douglas. Let me stop you right there. Seth Rogers, uh, yes, he's man. right. But does that have anything to do with Sebastian? Did Sebastian go barefoot outside? What Devil Dies, thank you for the 10, man. I hope you're doing well. And he says, I've watched them all. Chloe and I made lots of notes. There's serious issues with mom and stepdad's changing narratives. And yeah, that's that's what I've heard. I've heard that as well. I'm almost, I don't know, I'd like to, that's one of these days, I'm just so kind of caught up. But one of these days, I want to try to maybe listen to a few of them to see what everybody's talking about. And I do have the press conference. Thanks. Was he part of Barefoot for Autism? Do you know? No, he's got a pair of slippers that he wears, so he doesn't have to put on socks and shoes. He puts those on if he's going to go out to the trash or check the mail and doesn't want to put socks on. Have you seen him since the ant bed incident go outside barefoot? No, not in my house. Okay. All right. Uh, back to you, Douglas McGregor. Go ahead. Uh, so continuing on with just how he left the premises, the other question I have is, the the wording in that law enforcement is giving out with regard to what he was wearing, the clothing, that he was in a black sweater and black sweatpants. How do, how do we know that? Did he go to bed in those in that clothing? Uh, how do we know he didn't wake up in the middle of the night and change clothing? I think the wording should be he may 
be in a black sweatshirt and sweatpants, or he may have those things on him if they are missing from his house. But we don't know that he left in those. You know, that's a really good point. Seth Rogers, what about it? Is that what he slept in? How do we know that's what he was wearing? His mom said that he was wearing black leisure pants and a black t-shirt when she when he went to bed. Guys, I want you to hear what Eric Craddock, Chief Deputy of Sumner County Sheriff's, has to say. Really wanted to come to the community and ask for your help. We need you to search your properties every day, morning and night. Uh, if there's a shed or a crawl space or up under your mobile home or a tarp that's in your yard, check it every morning and check it every night. <laughs> Look for any details that something has been disturbed. Uh, if there's a shirt that was there today that wasn't there yesterday, notify us. You can really help us by searching your own property twice a day. Uh, like I said, we're operating under the assumption that Sebastian walked off and we really need your help to ensure that he is uh, brought home safely. Did he? Did he walk off? If so, why are canines not picking up his scent? I can tell you this, uh, Seth Rogers, and to you, Douglas McGregor, the best witness I ever put on the stand and all the years I tried cases, and I don't mean shopliftings, I mean felony homicides, uh, violent crimes, was a dog. If the dog tells me the dog cannot pick up a scent, I believe the dog. So I'm having a hard time accepting what I'm hearing, that this young autistic boy just wandered out in the middle of the night without shoes on. Okay, back to you, Douglas McGregor. Tell me more of your analysis. So looking at what the canines were able to pick up, those canines should be picking up multiple scents. Uh, and it's all based on Sebastian's routine activities. You know, does he go to a friend's house during the week? Does he go to the corner store? Does he occasionally walk to school, even taking the bus? Those canines should be picking up all those scents from that seven days past because canines regularly train from uh, uh, scenarios where someone's gone missing from one hour up to seven days and bloodhounds can pick up even longer than seven days. So those canines should be picking up scents they should be tracking those scents and then ruling them out as a as an activity from the past that isn't associated with him going missing on that Sunday evening. Seth Rogers, why have you been told that authorities are searching a landfill? They told me they just wanted to make sure that there was nothing there. Aaron Contrell joining me, News Channel 5 out of Nashville. Aaron, what can you tell me about this landfill search? Yeah, Nancy, so they had got a tip that potentially from the uh, the garbage workers that maybe the trash may have been off a little bit. What do you mean by that? You can't just throw a grenade into my mind palace and expect me not to follow up. What do you mean something was off? So basically the, the workers said they, you know, they have the same garbage truck drivers that come to the house. And when they picked up the, the garbage can, it just felt more heavier than normal. Um, so they just said that to the uh, authorities. So just to follow up on that tip, they went out to the landfill to search because that's where the trash is taken. Um, there in Sumner County, they take it out there to Kentucky. Um, so just following up on that tip, that's what kind of led them out there because, you know, we're used to our garbage, you know, the same garbage truck workers coming out there. They know kind of how the trash usually feels every single day. So it felt a little off for them. So that's why they told that to mm. the uh, authorities. So that's kind of what led them to the landfill to start um, looking around. Seth Rogers, have you been asked to take a polygraph? No. Would you be willing to take a polygraph? I volunteered. I'm glad to hear that. You know why? I hold every parent to the gold standard. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Mark Class. His daughter, Polly, was uh, kidnapped from the home. She was horribly molested and murdered. When cops came to, he, like you, uh, was separated or divorced from his wife and lived separately. You know what he said when they came at the door? He's like, take my fingerprints, search my home, search my car, search my office, do whatever you want. Find my daughter. Find who took my daughter because it's not me. I'll take a poly. I'll do whatever you want. And they did all of that course it wasn't him it was somebody else but that said uh has the mother and the stepfather taken a polygraph i know the mom has so she agreed to a polygraph what about the stepfather i have no idea guys there is a reward for information in the search for this little autistic boy 
Uh, Aaron and Kentrell, I want you to take a listen to what Chief Deputy Eric Craddock has to say. Listen. Last Monday morning at about 6.30, Sebastian was reported missing from his home. Uh, since then, we've conducted an extensive and, and exhaustive search uh, around the home, looking for any evidence, any trace of Sebastian. Um, at this time, the decision has been made to scale back on the ground search operations. Uh, let me be clear that this does not diminish our commitment to finding Sebastian. This is simply us transitioning from the ground search to the investigative side. Uh, we are still committed to finding Sebastian and bringing him home safe. We have no leads, no details to indicate that Sebastian is not alive. From what I know, mm. I can tell you that at this juncture, the family has totally cooperated with police. I'm curious about these flashlights. Uh, back to you, Aaron Cantrell, uh, joining us from News Channel 5. Aaron, I, 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 I'm deducing, nobody's told me this, that the flashlights of apparently two people were seen in that neighborhood was it on Ring Cam? Yeah, they believe it's a kind of a neighborhood kind of video. So either Ring or some version of that in the neighborhood, which I'm in a Facebook group called Finding Sebastian Rogers. And neighbors have posted in there, uh, like one neighbor said, if if he would have walked near their house, you know, you have those automatic lights that sometimes come on, but that didn't come on. But in the video with the flashlights, you see two flashlights. That's all you can see because it's so dark. There's no um, street lights. In the really hard to see anything. But you see two lights walking towards kind of a uh, to the, the right of the video. But then you see, I think it may be into a wooded area. And then one of those uh, lights, both those lights disappear. But then you see one person stay away, but then some other person or thing comes back into the the, 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 the camera. So that's kind of odd too, because you see two flashlights leave and then you see some sort of body of something of one person walk back through the camera. I, I'm curious, how close were the flashlights to their home, to Sebastian's home? Very close. So it's right by, kind of right behind the home, kind of in like a common area of the neighborhood. So, you know, like a subdivision, there may be kind of like a, some grassier area. Maybe people may walk their, their dogs, that sort of thing. Um, so it's kind of a common area, but very close to um, Sebastian's home. So these flashlights of, we think, two people, we're right behind Sebastian's home. Is that correct, Aaron? Yes. Okay. Are you also telling me that there are lights that come on automatically that are motion censored on Sebastian's home? That's what one of the neighbors alluded to in a Facebook post early on in the investigation. You know, there was a Facebook group started and, you know, right now it's flooded with a lot of individuals. In the beginning, it was definitely more just family and neighbors. And one neighbor did mention that um, if he was to have walked by their home, their motion lights would have come on if he walked on the side of their home. So that was kind of odd, too, because that's why the neighbor said that was suspicious to her, because her light normally comes on if anybody walks past um, the home. And Aaron, the motion activated lights on Sebastian and the neighbor's home did not come on. No. Mm -mm. which is in the video when you see the flashlights. That's why all you can see are the two dots of the flashlight. You can't really see anything else. Weird. Hypoallergom. Make more. For one cloud financial system. That sweet is offered. Oh. Um, let me read. That was towards the end. Um, this was Chloe's notes from, let's see. What was this from? 19 hours ago. And this is the notes from, oh, well, it's going to be easier for me to read on this screen. More from the live Seth last night. She took some, a lot of notes, actually. Seth is the biological father. Seth offered to do a polygraph and was told it wasn't necessary. He was at work around 6 p.m., got a text about 7.20 a.m. to call Chris. It was a 911 call. Now type of text. That's how he found out his son was missing. So we got a text about 7.20 a.m. to call Chris. Maybe because he was at work, I guess. I don't know. It was a 911 call. It was a 911 call now type of text. Call now type of text. Okay. That's how he found out his son was missing. When Seth got to the house, Sebastian's room was a mess. Which I thought, I thought he said in this podcast the house was clean, but 
Bed wasn't made. Sheriffs had already been into the house to search. Seth did not, does not know when Chris, the stepfather, went to Memphis because he that's where he works. He knows he was there the weekend before because when Seth and Sebastian weekend before because when Seth had Sebastian, Katie went to see Chris. Okay. So when the bio dad has Sebastian, Katie goes to see Chris. I, I guess at work maybe. Seth hasn't has not seen the video of Katie and Sebastian that Sunday night. He's asked to see some of those videos and he has not been given access to see them. He communicated with Chris more than Katie because he could get in contact more quickly with Chris. Chris is who told him Sebastian was missing, not Katie. That's odd as shit to me. I think that the biological parents should be the main people communicating and going back and forth. That's weird to me. I don't know, but maybe for some that's normal. Um, He would call Chris to speak to Sebastian sometimes through Chris's phone. That's weird to me, too. Chris takes a trailer down to Memphis and stays in it down there. Okay. Seth hasn't seen Chris and Katie searching, but he doesn't know if they have been. Seth cannot confirm if Sebastian is scared of Chris. All parties agreed about Sebastian going to live with Seth, his biological dad. Took a little convincing to Katie. But in their custody agreement, it says households can be switched as long as everyone is on board. Seth is asked if Katie was ever violent towards him. He says there's been a few times Katie hit him and a few times the police were called. Hmm. Not every marriage is hunky dory. Katie and Seth divorced before Katie was out of the military. They were not divorced before she started her relationship with Chris. Seth's sister was threatened about the GoFundMe because Chris believed it would interfere with the investigation. Interesting. Seth doesn't know if any of any prescribed medication that Katie's on. Doesn't know. As of last night, he had not heard from the TBI since Friday or Saturday. Seth was homeless in California when Katie filed for divorce and accused him of child CA, child inappropriate things to a child. Like, a, you know, I don't know if TikTok's sensitive to that or not. The weird, whatever, TikTok CA. Sebastian made the comment that he would rather live in Seth's car than live with his mom. He's been waiting to live with Seth for a long time. And I thought what I had heard about the story, I thought that weekend, I thought I could be wrong. Sebastian was supposed to stay with his biological father, but that didn't happen for some reason. They had a switch or something. You know, maybe he wasn't happy about that. Seth said when him and Katie were together, they would talk on the phone on the way to and from work at times, but not phone calls that were hours long. Seth believes the three-way call to the sheriff's office is very weird. Seth says Chris didn't come back from Memphis immediately. He said he came back when law enforcement started asking questions. Hmm. I thought he came back immediately. I thought that was the story that was put out. That the stepdad did. Seth cannot recall exactly what time it was that he returned. Seth fell asleep in his truck for a little while. He was so exhausted. Seth said they've searched Katie's house 10 to 12 times with dogs and officers. No forensic searches That's been that he's been made aware of. Early on, they were told not to speak to the media. Seth was also boots on the ground from the moment he knew he was missing. He doesn't know what happened, and he was told not to think about it. Wait, he doesn't know what happened. He was told not to think about it by the police department. He's spoken to Katie twice on the phone with Chris present since Sebastian has been missing. Seth says he hasn't had a conversation he would like to have with Katie. That is so weird to me. Katie is the biological mother. 
there's Seth is the biological father. Chris is the stepdad and Katie is biological mother. And so from what I'm gathering, Chris as the biological father seems like the only the main course of communication had to be through the stepdad, which to me, that's such a shitty thing. I mean, maybe some people that's normal, but to me, like both biological parents should be able to communicate directly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with like the step parent being involved or like you guys meet each other, or, you know, this communication, but like, especially in a time like this, an emergency. And as a text to call me, hey, this is an emergency, call me, text? Bitch, you better call me. <laughs> the fuck, my kid's missing? That's weird. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, it's a, you know they've, they've searched the house, though. Police have, so... Very, very I, I have no idea what to think, man. Wow. I can't imagine. That's got to be frustrating. I cannot imagine having to talk through somebody else to talk to my child and not being able to talk to my child that that would be i can't imagine that's almost like degrading in a way i think it's almost degrading to to have to make somebody do that the, i can't talk to mom i have to talk to mom's boyfriend to talk to my own kid what <laughs> i can't imagine what that's like it's got to be frustrating and then i mean if I leave my kid in your care, the other parent, I'm entrusting that you're going to make sure they're okay. I mean, there's things that you, I guess you can't help, but it's your job to make sure my kid's fine. I can't imagine how that feels. Mm. And we better be talking every day on the, if our kids missing at least once a day communication. Hey, what's going on? Hey, have you seen anything? Hey, blah, 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 blah. Deanna said they think Seth is sus. I mean, they've they've all been doing interviews, so I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm going to have to listen. I'm gonna, one of these, maybe on the weekend or something, I'm going to listen. Tonight, we're going to be on Discord. We're watching the Nickelodeon thing. <sighs> tonight, we're watching episode. We've been watching one episode a night. So tonight's episode three, Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. So we're doing that tonight at nine. Um, I, I hope they get some answers. I don't, I can't imagine how frustrating it must be. Just to disappear. That, that's the, I just can't imagine just to disappear like that. All right. Um, we're going to do another stream on the second channel. So just make sure you sub subscribe here. It can Mel. We're also going to be, we're going to jump on the second channel at, in 10 minutes, 12, 10 minutes. It can mail CC, TikTok, I'm coming right back. Facebook, the same page, coming right back. There is a manhunt in Idaho. Some guy in some type of gang, a white, I don't even know if I can say it because TikTok is so weird to me. A white, um, uh, mamma mist, <laughs> mamma. I don't know what you call it, gang. Supposedly he was a part of the gang like that. He has an accomplice, apparently. It was like a shootout going on. Three officers shot. But believe it or not, well, you probably believe it. The third officer, or one of the officers shot each other. Friendly fire. Because the, the guy, from the little bit of notes that I read, this happened in a hospital, I guess, they escaped. The other hospital, the other officer was responding to the situation. He sees somebody else armed and he thought maybe that was the shooter. So he 
I guess he shot his own guy by accident. A mess. A mess. Um... Mel dangerously asked to close windows and doors. So, I actually said I'm over TikTok and I don't have it. Yeah, that's the wave, man. That's the wave. So, I'm going to transfer you guys there. Uh, it's ICMLCC. I'm going to just take a few minutes to like go refresh for a minute and come back. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop.